Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome everyone to our live stream conversation on business messaging for brands to talk about the challenges and the trends around this. So my name is uh, Zara Chaudhry, I'm from the GSMA, and I'm really, really excited to be hosting what is going to be a very global conversation on this really critical topic. Um, we are going to be joining you from three different time zones uh, and also three very varying ways of connecting to the Wi-Fi as well. So this is going to be a truly live discussion. Um, and with that, let me uh, introduce my co-panelists uh, for this session. We have Lemore Bailey from Rakuten Viber and also Frederick Nyman from Link Mobility. Lemore and Frederick, how are you guys doing? Good. Right, well, connections are good, so we're looking good. This conversation is, is ready. So just by introduction, um, you know, Lamore and Frederick, if you could just please introduce yourselves to our audience, um, and then we'll jump into the topic. So Lamore, if you'd like to go first. Yes, so firstly, thank you, Zahara. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, my name is Lamore Bailey, um, and I'm the Partnerships Account Manager at Viber. Um, been with Viber for four years. I'm very excited for the conversation that we're going to have today. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, Limor. I'm Frederick. I'm the CCO of Link Mobility. Link Mobility, we're a global CPaaS provider coming from, uh, from the Nordics, uh, stock listed in Oslo. Brilliant. And to our audience, uh, as mentioned, my name is Zara and I'm with the GSMA. So we are the, the voice of the global telecom operator community and also hosts of Mobile World Congress Barcelona. Um, which takes place at the end of February. Um, I mean, we didn't come to talk about me. We, the, we came to talk about a, a really, a really important topic and one of the most understated sentences to begin any conversation with right now. But nevertheless, I'm going to use it. But a lot has changed over the last two years. Right? This has been a very unprecedented time. I'm sure, we're very bored of all hearing that phrase. But nevertheless, that that is a scenario that we're in. But Probably one of the most critical changes or interesting changes that we've seen is how audiences, people and communities now expect to engage with brands, right? So um, I think we've all seen it. We, we, it's a change in the channels that we're expecting to communicate with brands with, the, the ethics that we judge our brands by, um, and also the tone of voice that they want to, to hear to be spoken to with as well. It really is a new era for brand communication. And, and today I'm really excited to be jumping into that topic. To everyone in our audience, I would say we have some fantastic panelists here. So make sure that if you do have any questions, just be adding them into the, the comments box and, we, and we'll get to them uh, in hopefully the discussion as well. Um, but let's start from the beginning. So we've seen these you know, incredible new trends in communications. Um, but what really are the kind of main key ones that you see have kind of emerged with customers over the the COVID crisis, like how has how has the messaging actually shifted, um, Frederick? If I can maybe start with yourself first for some thoughts. Absolutely, I, I think with with the pandemic, there has been a, a few things that has happened. Of course, we have seen that some industries have definitely taken a hit. I mean, we we worked a lot with the travel companies, airlines, hospitality, and and so on. And there, we've definitely seen seen a challenge. But we've also seen growing segments. I mean, the, the governments and the, the, the vaccinations and the e-commerce and, and the gaming companies, they have really picked up on this. They are native digitally, so they are they are super good and, and really quick to pick up on, on the shifts here. But it's it's been a challenging environment, but I think, you know, we see that it's, it's growing. Not even a, a terrible pandemic, I think, can stop a global mega trend that is uh, how you have meaningful conversations that provide value with your end customers. Everybody needs to do that. And the pandemic has just put a focus on, on providing value and being engaging. I think. No, absolutely. Um, and and Lemo, if, if there's anything you'd like to also answer to that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think from our side, what we've seen um, over the past couple of years, and especially since, um, you know, the COVID came into our lives, unfortunately, we've seen that more and more people were forced to turn towards the digital means of staying in touch with their families, their friends and their colleagues. And we really saw that a lot of businesses and brands wanted to dip their toes into, you know, this kind of messaging world. 
Um, we can also see from our side um, that um, messaging apps are a really incredibly powerful way um, for marketers to communicate with their customers. Um, and it's really been a strategic approach for them over the past couple of years to do so. Um, after the first year of the pandemic, um, we saw a, a, a really big shift of um, and an increase of business messaging, specifically in the rise of transactional messaging. And transactional messaging, I mean by um, order confirmations, delivery status, um, appointments and so forth, really essential um, you know, updates that people were looking to receive. Um, and we also saw a really big shift in parallel towards two-way conversations, um, you know, where brands now saw the value of building a meaningful relationship with their clients via messaging apps. So I'd love to deep, dive a little bit deeper in, in, into that point, that that two-way messaging, um, basically essentially building a conversation with clients, I think, as as a consumer, uh, at the end of the day, that's something which I really, you know, witnessed firsthand, and that also uh, probably says more about how much I've been purchasing over <laughs> over the last couple of years, <laughs> along with along with the rest of the world as well, right? But could you elaborate a little bit more on on the, the two way messaging piece there? Yes, definitely. So we've seen a really big shift in consumer behaviour when it comes to the needs and how brands need. to to meet those needs, how they meet, need to meet your needs, you know, for the shopper that you are and that I am. Um, so things needed to change. Um, we can also see and we understand that the majority of people want to have, you know, they prefer texting instead of calling a business, you know, waiting on the line and having to get through to somebody and then waiting for them to come back. It's something that's really per se. It's old school. People want to have that direct, you know, relation and, and, and conversation with their businesses. No, absolutely, absolutely, um, and and I guess I guess what have what have what have you learned from the user preferences uh, as well with that in terms of actually how people can be incorporating that into their communication plans? Well, we've seen that that users really want to have that conversation with the business rather than just receiving a one way message. So for a business just sending you a message, that's 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 good, but they want to have that conversation. They want to have the ability to let you know what they like, what they don't like, if they have an issue. It's really about that feedback and, you know, that 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 one-on-one -on -one correspondence with the brand, showing them that they care. Um, increasing kind of the lifetime value, if you'd like to call it, between, you know, the business and building a relationship um, with the company at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Frederick, is that, in line, is that in line with kind of also what you've experienced as well and what you've been seeing? Absolutely. I, I think the demand now is on a business to have real conversations with mm. their end customers. And, and we definitely see this being driven by, you know, both the big digital native companies and also the small mom and pop shops, because they are they are doing this on their phone and or they are using it on a, on a simple GUI. And then we see now that this is seeping into the mid market, so to speak, between those tech giants and and, uh, and the smaller companies. But, uh, you definitely have to be there. I think that's uh, that's critical. There's two ways to, to be there. Either you listen and you are available on those channels or you start to communicate on 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 the channels and you see where your customers are, are picking up on uh, on these messages i think that's uh, you, you have to start and you have to try with this and, and definitely you need to start having conversations and, and being able to listen so so you i want to pick up on a phrase that you just use there real conversations and i think that's a really interesting one com uh, it's a really interesting um phrase in a very digital first space so when you say real conversations what do you mean if you can give us us and our audience an example of that yeah i i think real conversations that means that you need to be present where your your customer is and you need to be able to answer questions so any questions related to your company you need to be able to answer that means yeah. in, in, in a support phase or in a promote, you know, if you get a question based on a promotional activity or if, if you get feedback based on a transactional use case. So uh, I think I think one of the examples that I like to use and where we have seen 
this has been in use now for quite a few years, is that, you know, you're getting a package delivery, you should be able to do something with that. It shouldn't be simple one-way communication. And I think that this has shifted now during the last five years. So, so that's been good. And that, that's going to come into more and more use cases and more into more and more uh, customer dialogues. You need to be able to, to hear back and, and provide an intelligent answer based on, on what your customer is saying. Absolutely. And, and a little more from your side, when we're talking about real conversations, I guess, what kind of examples of that have you seen where it's that's really being used to its optimized? So on our side, um, we understand the demand um, that brands, are, you know, constantly are looking for that deeper relationship with their clients and vice versa. Um, and at Viber, we are developing and rolling out new features. So, for example, we can talk about the photo um, and the video files where a user can easily send a photo and a video. You can take an example of, um, say, you've bought a, a table from a furniture store. We won't mention any names. Um, and you have to assemble this at home. It's happened to me on many occasions. Um, but the assembly is incorrect. Um, and you'd like to, you know, you need to speak to somebody to understand if you received all the tools or if the table has been set up properly. And it's much easier to send the business a video or a picture and have that, you know, direct communication with the business to see what the issue is and to help you sort it out quite instantaneously. Um, a second feature that um, is really popular is the fact that brands can also send videos to their users. And this is really something that is extremely encouraging and creative and can really allow the brands to fully utilize all of their content. Um, we have file sharing, um, you know, so important information such as receipts or booking confirmations, etc when a person is maybe even making a room reservation in a hotel and he can get the confirmation directly into his messaging app. Um, pin to top, important business messages. This is something that, you know, I also used um, very recently when I traveled. Um, you receive your PCR uh, test results. Unfortunately, today we live in this world and, you know, when you're flying in the airport, you have to be able to show this when you get to certain areas in the airport and instead of having to look through different folders and files in your phone it's really easy to pin it to the to, to the top of the message and to easily show it to 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 who it needs to be um, also the fact that users can reply specifically to messages inside a conversation a lot of mm. times people are having long conversations you know with the business um, they might have forgotten about why they contacted the business or there's something very specific, you know, you're able to really go back to that specific message and really, you know, discuss what needs to be discussed. But in general, I think all of these features um, and all of these developments really should make for a simpler communication flow between the user and the brand and help the users really chat with their brands the way they would chat with their friends. You know, the yeah. way that I would chat with you or with my family, I like sending pictures, I like sending videos. It just needs to be more natural um, yeah. and more intuitive. I think that's the really interesting piece here as well, right? Because I think we, uh, it's and exactly what you mean in terms of the conversation parts, it's the, the speed of that conversation rather than getting lost in in emails. It's the being added, being able to add multimedia to, to something like, just take a snapshot and whatnot. And it's just, I think a lot of it does come down to exactly what we said, the, the speed of what a natural conversation would, would look like. Um, and as someone who has also had to work with a number of different brands uh, to for missing parts or like, you know, wrong sizes or incorrect things, actually that, it, it really, it really actually helps the transaction process because when you know you can have a customer service experience like that, you know, you're, I as a consumer are much more likely to actually be able to go back because I know that actually there's a there's a voice that you're interacting with rather than um, just being an, uh, an order number. Um, and and on that point, I think you know. So what I'm what I'm taking here is obviously the conversational piece here is critical. Um, and you know, we you both talked about examples of customer support, receiving feedback, and and more. But I'm just thinking about other use cases that maybe we can kind of discuss and showcase to our our audience. So maybe how else have businesses and companies achieved their essentially their kind of KPIs and their goals um, with these messaging opportunities? Um, Frederick, I don't know if there's a, there's examples that you can maybe kind of go into and, and share. 
Yeah, definitely. I think so. There, we at Link, we see three super use cases that, that definitely our customers are, are using us for. Basically, the first one we talked about is the customer support one. It's, uh, you know, being asked a question and being able to reply. And I wholeheartedly agree with, with Limor here. This, this is about providing conversation. This is about providing value. And then you need to be able to use all the medias that you would in a personal communication. This is how you provide value to, to someone. But then, of course, we have the, the transactional use case, the one I, I mentioned. There you're also expecting conversation nowadays. And I think in, in a support case, the, the one with Limor talked about, there you need to be able to provide AI or you need to have a live agent because it, it, the demands are quite high uh, in, in that use case. In the transactional use case, I think you're able to, to use chatbots much more efficiently. This is about providing structured feedback. You're going to be you're going to be changing your time, so you're going to be asking for uh, the OTP on a different channel or or something like that. That's where you will be able to to structure this in, in a much more intuitive way and still provide value to the end customer. And then, of course, from where I'm coming link mobility we have to a large extent been for 15 years doing promotional traffic on the mobile device and and for me that's the third use case that we're talking about here so promotional traffic you know you you want to get a customer to to buy something i think if you do the first two use cases really well then you will have a, a natural opportunity here to, to proficiently use promotional messaging and talk to your customers and be able to provide a very personalized view. Uh, one of our CRM partners that, that we are working with says, you know, a segment, that's one customer. That's a segment. We, we don't do bigger segments than that, than that. Everything needs to be hyper-personalized. And I think that's a, that's a valuable thing to, to take with us because, you know, when I chat with my friends, it's one-to-one. And that's how brands need to communicate to end customers uh, as well. It's, it's not different. And, and that's how you provide value. But in all three of these use cases, I think conversational is going to be key going forward. And, and we see this picking up and growing now. Very exciting. No, brilliant. And and to, 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 to grow on that, I mean, um, Lemur over at Viber, have you, have you seen any of that difference coming through between the general promotional messaging and that's which hyper personalized as well. Is that a similar experience for you? Yes, we have definitely. Um, it obviously changes and it varies between markets. Um, you know, there's differences in, in in open and click rates when you analyze the results of you know various marketing campaigns. Um, but you know, it's 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 very different when you're looking at your kind of bulk messaging that you send out and hoping that it will resonate with your audience kind of the you know spray and pray marketing you just send it out and you hope somebody out there might you know enjoy the message that you've sent and and react to it um or you can use a a messaging app that is connected to a crm system um, that can target a specific audience and um, I really believe that the second approach, as we've been discussing, will help to really communicate with your audience in a more meaningful and targeted rate and obviously achieve the higher conversion rates that, you know, all brands are looking for. Absolutely. Um, I have to say, spray and pray campaigns. Uh, that reminds me of my early days when I first started out my marketing career. <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase in a while, but definitely the polar opposite of kind of you know what this conversation is about and actually also how you said how how brand um, conversations with customers are, are are going and should be going as well um so just a reminder to our audience we're getting some questions through which is brilliant but um you know do post some questions uh, if you've got anything obviously we've got some um you know some great experience here on the panel to, to kind of help you through that but let's let's start kind of going through some of these audience questions i think they're quite interesting and we can get into some of the meat of this um, so I can see one here, actually, uh, Lamore, this one's to, to yourself. Um, how can users and businesses be sure that the data included in message contents are safe inside Viber? So interesting one, security obviously is, is, a, is a big chunky topic these days. Um, do you have any comments on that? 
Yes, yeah, so firstly, security for Viber and us is like the gold, uh, the golden standard. Um, obviously, this is really very much part of our DNA. All of our features um, that we create, um, very much we have this, you know, in, in, in the back of our minds every time that we do create a new feature. Um, and it's extremely important for us, um, you know, that security is number one um, representation um, for all of our clients, end users, as well as businesses. Um, it's very important that we give assurances also to our customers and our users. Um, we have, um, first of all, end-to-end -end encryption, which I think is something that um, goes without saying. Um, and it means that all messages are encrypted, essentially. So if, for example, you know, a message might be hacked along the way, um, they won't be able to be read because end-to-end encryption primarily applies to a private group and chats between individuals. And this is also carried out in the business messaging between a business and um, and the end user. So end-to-end -end encryption is obviously key. Um, we obviously don't store any messages on our servers. Um, and I think this is really important. Um, when we have a look at, for example, um, you know, if you send out an, an, an email, that's something that unfortunately might, could be stored on providers' uh, servers and chances are that your email provider will allow other companies to read your emails and then, you know, serve you with targeted ads and so forth. But a trustworthy messaging app absolutely does not store any of the messages on their servers. Um, and then we also have the HTTP protocol, um, which is a secure connection between the partner's protocol and the system used um, by the messaging apps. And users also can be extremely confident in the fact that, um, you know, all brands that want to have an official business account with Viber are manually reviewed um, by each of the Viber teams and they need to accept the user privacy policy. Um, to communicate with the user via Messenger, we have a verified business profile that has a blue tick, which is a sign of authenticity. Um, so generally, over and above, just very important to understand that we take security extremely seriously. Um, and um, it really is very much part of our DNA and a gold standard with us at Viber. Brilliant. And and Frederick, I, I guess um same same kind of question to you if you've got any comments on it from the, the link mobility perspective in terms of well, I mean, how, how you've seen that kind of security landscape evolve and, and what you're doing in there. You know, I think uh, what Limor says rings very, very true. Security is so important nowadays and i think we ho have better tools now also the the you know the traditional sms uh, that is now being challenged a lot because of security reasons and i think uh, we we're, we're seeing that with the otts and with also rcs coming you know security is really at the heart of, of this and and it's both from a business perspective and it's also from an end user perspective i mean we have very good legislation now with gdpr in place in europe for example that protects user privacy and, and that uh, uh, for example racket and viber is good at taking care of excellent um so, I mean, we've talked about how, obviously, over the last five years, the innovation that we've seen is, is, is incredible. I guess what we're, everyone is always really interested to find out is, is what next, right? And I think it would be great to get your perspectives on what do we see the future of messaging apps being? You know, what is that next step in innovation like? You know, how is, what's that, this landscape going to look like in five, 10 years? You know, can, can that be predicted? Um, I guess is, is, is a kind of a key question. So, so Lamore, from a, from a Viber perspective, do you have any ideas that you can kind of share with the audience and where you're going? Yeah, well, we're always thinking about the future. So I think this is really a great question. Um, for us, I mean, we obviously always looking at the movement and we're looking and, and, and we're speaking with our, with our clients and we want to understand, you know, what their vision is. Um, but what we can really see is that currently many users are only utilizing about one to three of their apps. Um, I know for myself, I have about I have a million apps on my phone and, and I really use, I think, one or two of them for the majority of the day. 
So people are looking really for, you know, one app, one gateway where, you know, they can provide everything with inside this one app. We can call it kind of like a super app or a meta app, if you want to call it that way. Um, and, you know, we want to be able to provide brands the ability and more opportunities to interact with their customers, you know, in a native environment, in this kind of super app. We're looking on developing new features on a, you know, constantly. And our goal is to ensure, you know, the users the opportunity not only to text and to call through Viber, but also to receive up-to-date information about anything. For example, their courier packages or the taxi or food or whatever it may be that they've ordered to pay for these services, um, you know, and to communicate with their favorite brands all through this one meta app to simplify everything you know if, if i can put it in 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 that way um payments in mobile apps is something that we're also looking to do to communicate with your friends and your teammates um you know and to cope with the daily routine utilities payments peer to p money transfers um, you know, food, shopping, um, enabling these payments on Viva and to establish really a framework for a single gateway, as I mentioned previously, for users to just have, you know, a very fast and personalized and obviously a very, very secure way of, you know, enjoying this experience, um, you know, on one meta app. That's really the vision, I believe, of, of, of where we want to go looking forward. And I can totally buy into that. I had um, it reminds me of a, a, a conversation I had with a, a tech guy. I mean, an analogy he used for the mobile home screen is that essentially, if you imagine that each app is a room, you have to keep going. If it was at a house, you'd have to keep going to a room. You'd have to come out of it again to go into another room to do something else. And actually, if you think about it in that sense, it's a very it's a very frictionful process. And so the idea of just one gateway, where actually you you know you've got everything to hand, actually feels much more in line with the kind of lifestyle, I guess, we're all kind of working towards anyway, right? In terms of right. You know, the, the the speed and ease of it. Um, building on that, because you mentioned in terms of getting new brands involved and how companies get, get started. I guess, Frederick, my question to you is, is how do you, what is your advice to a company who actually wants to get started in all of this? So where, where do they start? They, I think they start by listening to, thank you for that question, I, I should say, Sarah. I think they start by listening to their customer and I think they start by trying to understand their customer. I think me and Limor, we have a lot of data when it comes to, you know, what age groups and what specific industries, and where do where do they want to interact with, with your brand, etc. And they know uh, this themselves, but they need to start by listening to their customers because if we want to go towards hyper personalization, then that's the only way, really. You, you need to understand your brand and you need to understand it in relation to your customer and how they are, are perceiving it. And, and it could be that, you know, it's not one channel for, for everything. It's it's one channel for for transactional. It's one channel for customer support. And it's they, they want to do this in a fluid way that fits with their everyday life. So start by listening to your customer, read up, and definitely take some advice and take some expert help in getting up and running. It's not as complicated as it might feel in, in today's media landscape. I think it's it's much easier. And if you start with trial and error, then, then you, you will find your way. All brands need to become uh, digital and, and uh, it's the way it is right now. No, absolutely. And and if I could, if if we can, if we could just jump a little bit more in, into one of those those details points that you mentioned. And um, when we're looking at, um, I guess, building out more of that kind of conversation, um, conversational commerce, and adding more value to that piece, like um, what is, I guess, what is still needed there? Like how um, how do we actually get there for the brand? Yeah, I, I think uh, there are a few things that need to improve. Like Limor said, we, we need to get commerce into, com into the conversation. Commerce needs to be there. 
Um, you need to have uh, more capabilities to, I think, the CDP or the customer data platform that needs to, to be there. That's most often not there today when, when you do this uh, kind of communication. So really what we have been talking about the last 30 minutes, that's my projection of, of the next five years, that that is going to go mainstream. We're going to be able to add artificial intelligence into this because not everybody will be able to have uh, have live agents today. I think for most companies and for most use cases, live agents is still probably the way to go and unless you're one of these multi-billion tech giants in, in the world. Uh, that's just a matter of fact that uh, you need to have live agents today. But we will see this becoming mainstream and I think that's uh, it's a good thing. No, brilliant. Um, no, I, I completely completely in line with, and I think actually that's a sentiment that all of our users and our audience and any brand and consumer it can really kind of see as a uh, as the goal to goal to strive towards. So um, this has been really good. So we've talked about a couple of things. We talked about security. We talked about getting involved. We talked about the the end goal. Um, I guess to to kind of um, wrap it up in terms of what we've seen from a conclusion perspective, it's that. The, the, the shift is significant in, you know, in how businesses are uh, conversing. The pandemic has essentially kind of sped up a trend that was already happening there. Um, and I guess um, what would be quite um, kind of good to know um, is, well, actually, hold on, let me, I'm glad to ask this question, but I could just see if we had an audience member ask it, so I'll jump straight, straight to there. But um, for businesses which are looking at kind of getting it involved in this for the first time like are there kind of key points or key considerations that you think that they they should keep in mind the more if i ask if i point that question to yourself yeah sure um i think definitely i think the most important thing is really to being able to communicate with your client directly um as i've been discussing and, and you know it's kind of been my mantra over the past you know 30 40 minutes and i've been saying it, it's really key um to, for, for the businesses to co to to connect directly with their clients um to really ensure that you you have a good crm system in place um, that you are targeting your correct audience um, providing them with the right messages and obviously you know to have the tools to be able to have this direct communication people are long gone are the days of receiving sms's with very simple and annoying messages to say okay you know one or two different things nobody wants it everybody wants to have um, a communication with their brands everybody wants to speak with their brands in the way they would be speaking with their friends or with their families um, and they want that connection especially today especially in today's times especially being isolated not being able to go to the stores not being able to have that you know one-on-one -on -one, you know face-to-face -face kind of interaction with a store assistant um, this is something that we are seeing over and over again and something that we cannot you know highlight enough that this is what you know customers are looking for what brands are doing and what is essentially really increasing the conversions um, and bringing on better lifetime values for users and brands in general 100 percent. and and to add to add a question onto that this is, are we seeing a geographical spread in this like is this is this something quite globally kind of laid on or are there certain parts of the world which are adapting it slightly differently or are aiming for a slightly different end goal? So that's a very good question. So essentially, I think, again, Corona sped this up. Um, before Corona, I think two years ago, it was, you know, it, 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 you know, the West was kind of getting into this much quicker than we'd say more Eastern European and Southeast Asian countries. But today it's across the board. We're seeing all countries geographically. I'm sure, Frederick, you can agree with me. Everybody is on board. Um, all brands across the board um, are looking to really get into these conversational messagings, work with the correct CRM tools, and really, you know, have that direct interaction with their users. Brilliant. And Fred, Fred, to add to that, are there any particular regions that you've seen which are maybe excelling or doing things in a slightly different way, but nevertheless still hitting that mark? I, I think there are differences uh, for sure and we see growth levels that are varying across uh, across regions i think we we have seen in the last couple of years you know 
the growth has been tremendous. We see also from, you know, speaking a little bit about the industry from, from our peers that Asia is growing immensely. Uh, that's something that we see. Uh, South America seems to be growing uh, a lot as well. And this is also something you know, we don't have an office there, but we still see pickup of clients from, from there. So the need for this kind of services, yes. That's growing, and it's. I, I would say it's a mega trend, so it's growing everywhere. But certainly, there are growth pockets, and there are use case growth pockets that are bigger than others. Yeah. So just jump on board here. Sorry, Zara. Just um, in yeah, Southeast please. Asia, as you mentioned. Okay, I think your internet. Um, yeah, there we go. You're back with us. Um, we saw a very large growth, obviously. Um, you know, during the pandemic times with regards to food delivery services um, and pharmaceutical companies. And again, I think I mentioned this previously, but, you know, a lot of, um, you know, direct communication with doctors and, um, you know, you know, making appointments and so forth. So the growth there has been really big if it wasn't, you know, there before. Um, and I agree 100% with Frederick. Um, you know, we just can't see, we, we're continuing to see a boom um, as we speak. Definitely. So, so we've had a really interesting question come through from the audience, which I'm, I'm really keen to hear your, your both your thoughts on. Is there a danger of over personalization when brands are looking at communicating with with customers? Like, where do you draw the line? Where does it? Where is it nice? Slash, where does it become a little bit maybe too big brother or too <laughs> too informal? What are your experiences around around that? I think if you take responsibility, I, I don't see the danger. I think if you take responsibility, if you don't, as Limor called it, if you do spray and pray, if you if you have a million customers and, and you send personalized messages to them every week, that will, of course, not work. Even hyper-personalized based on your latest, the web page you were in on latest on, on their website, etc. That that will, will not work. Like in any kind of relationship you take need to take responsibility for your communication and and if you do that and if you're sensitive to what the, your consumer wants to to read and receive i don't think there is a danger for over personalization this this is about understanding your customer and don't communicate too much and don't you know if if the person wants uh, some some or more integrity then give more general uh, advice yeah, and Limor, what are your thoughts? Is it is it is there is it possible to over personalize a um, conversation? Um, I think it's possible to do anything. Um, I'm the optimist, but no, I think in this case, brands are working with you know a very limited amount of information on their users. Um, you know, so they're not going to you know send too much information because obviously users need to agree to the amount of information that they're sharing with the brands. Um, and, and the brands obviously have to be, you know, wary and respect that, as Frederick said, um, and obviously send the relevant amount of information weekly, bi-weekly, you know, kind of spamming users with information that is irrelevant to them, you know, that just defeats their entire purpose. So I think it's, um, it's, it's really in the brand's best interest to send out relevant messaging according to the behavior with the information that they've obviously collected from the users. But again, the users don't really submit, you know, a, a huge amount of that information. So I believe it should be limited. Um, and, and it is a big responsibility um, from the brands to do so. Definitely. Well, I mean, to our audience, um, if you've been listening in, I would say, there's one thing that you're taking away from this. It's really clear that messaging is no longer just for, you know, apps or private group messages with your with your friends or uh, with the, the the family group. But actually, messaging is now definitely, as we've seen from the examples that both um, Stephen and Moore and Frederick have gone through, it's it's the platform for building meaningful relationships between users and brands. And I think we're in a really exciting space that we're going to only see it kind of kind of more integrated and more personalized um, uh, and, and effective from that. So um, we're coming up to the end of our time, but before we close off, um, I just wanted to kind of get some uh, kind of closing statements from, from both yourself in terms of what should our audience kind of really walk away from this this from. So um, Frederick, if I, if I start with yourself first, what should our audience take away? 
Yeah, I think as a brand, what you should take away is that, you know, what we've been talking about here for me is at least par partially the future. And we don't see this in mainstream yet. And I think brands need to get out there and they need to start listening. If I go onto web pages of, of any normal brand here in the Nordics, normally they, they don't allow for a chat option or they have a web chat, which is, uh, which is not filling the functions because I'm not going to stay on, on that website. So there's still so much to do. It's in its infancy, and we're going to see exponential growth here. There, there are lighthouse companies out there that are showing the way when it comes to this, but, but we're going to see really huge growth when it comes to this. That, that's how I feel, because this is providing value to the, to the end customer. So what my takeaway is, you know, you need to get out there. You need to start advertising this, and you need to start listening, because if you're not, then you're losing out towards the competition and and uh, there's no two ways about it you need to start listening to your consumers absolutely and with the attention span of customers these days once you've <laughs> lost them regaining them is a it's a, it's a very it's a tough job um yeah. on that one uh, Lamore, and come closing thoughts from yourself so frederick summed it up really really well um and I, I, I might come from 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 the different side um you know from fiber side from the from the mobile app side from from, from our end, I mean, I just, we, we, we really do see that there is a big push, um, you know, from the customers requesting this. We see a big interest also from businesses in wanting to communicate with their brands. It's essential. Um, this is how we are moving forward. Um, we need to, again, as Frederick mentioned, definitely listen to our users, definitely make sure that we have all of the elements in place. Security is a must, have the correct features, um, you know, ensure that we are providing the right platform. Um, we have the right CRM tools in place in order to allow this to happen and to move forward. Um, it's always easy to say, listen and do, but again, you have to listen, you have to do, and you also have to create. Um, and you have to be very thoughtful in that process um, in making sure that um, you know features and products um, you know are, are, are already created in, in in the correct way so audiences will feel safe in doing so and communicating and ensuring you know the longevity of every product brilliant and, and completely line and, and I have to say I'm looking at some of the comments in the the audience um, there is a, uh, a high demand for Viber to, to kind of do more work with them in Azerbaijan, Dubai, Georgia, and Kazakhstan. So hopefully, <laughs> I think what that means is the message is landing very nice and clearly with our audience um, in terms of getting, getting involved. Um, so we're gonna pull up a couple of, a, a slide at the moment, just for anyone who would like more information um, on actually how you can get involved um, and, and work with these two incredible brands. Um, have a look at the QR uh, codes, which are gonna come onto this slide uh, any moment now give them a scan and then that will be an opportunity of finding out some more information on that. But unfortunately, we are coming up to the end of our time uh, that we've had today. But this has been an absolutely fantastic opportunity to talk about this, this topic with you both. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and thank you to everyone in our audience for, for watching, for participating. Um, and we, well, I mean, we look forward to seeing how this conversation evolves and, and uh, having a part two of this discussion in the future. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.